Right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, we are very excited to have you all here tonight um, to talk a bit about preparing for the upcoming career fairs. We have several happening this coming September that we'll talk about, as well as uh, once throughout the rest of the year. So this is a really, really great workshop to be a part of, to start thinking about how to register, how to prepare, and how we'll move forward. So um, I'm Beth Jamison. I am one of the career consultants for Dietrich College here at the Career and Professional Development Center. I'm excited to talk to you tonight and I will pass it off to my partner, Katie. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Katie Flanagan. I am the other assistant director and career consultant for Dietrich College, as well as the career consultant for the School of Drama. So we're excited to have you all here tonight so we can get ready for the upcoming career fairs. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. So I would encourage you to make sure that you're staying on mute unless you do have a specific question at the end of the workshop. Feel free if you want to put things in the chat throughout our time tonight, you can absolutely do that. Um, and one of us will be looking at the chat um, throughout our entire time. You will get a copy of the recording and the slides. So if you forget anything that we say tonight, you can always come back and and visit that. All right. And so, uh, as Beth said, we're we're going to focus on the upcoming career fairs for this fall. Some of you have probably already registered for some of them, but we want to make sure that you're feeling confident, uh, whether that is signing up for the fair itself, what you need to do before, during, and after, and then we'll allow time for some Q&A at the end. All right, so this is just a sampling of some of the upcoming career fairs hosted by the Career and Professional Development Center. You have probably seen that there's other events or maybe employer talks or info sessions that are on Handshake. So we definitely encourage you to check those out as well. But for our intents and purposes tonight, we'll be focusing on our career fairs. Um, the one that is coming up most uh, quickly here that's open to, to all students is our STEM Plus Career Fair. This one is unique because it's actually going to be over the course of three days. And over each day, there will actually be different employers. It will also be hosted in two separate locations within the university center. So one on the, the main floor and one upstairs in, in the Rango's ballroom. So the signage and, and setup will be a little bit different for, for that particular one. Um, but with each of our fairs, the setup tends to change depending on, on the needs. So as you can see, there's a virtual career fair coming up on, on September 19th, which will also be STEM focused. And we'll talk about virtual fairs in a little bit here. We also have engineering and biotech and Spark, which is the name for our startups and emerging companies fair. So um, as Beth said, we have different fairs throughout the year, but again, this is just a sampling based on recruiting seasons that match our employers. All right. So I imagine some of you, this is your first ever career fair. That's exciting. We're, we're glad that you're going to be a part of it with us. And we want to make sure we're setting those expectations and being all on the same page here. So some of you might be thinking like, okay, career fair is the only way that I can ever get a job, which is not true. <laughs> so we, we want to make sure that you're using this uh, as a time. Maybe if you are uh, a first year student or maybe you're um, just trying to um, get your, your toes into a company to learn a little bit more, you might be using it to, to gather that information, um, to ask questions, to learn more about the company itself, more about a role itself. And so all of those reasons would be a great way to, to spend your career fair time. Um, if you're an upperclassman, you're probably using that time more to explore internships or full-time opportunities uh, after you graduate. So so you might be utilizing that to seek or discuss different internship or job opportunities. Um, this also doesn't mean that you're automatically going to be handed a job at the career fair. So again, just trying to set expectations here. Um, other things to, to think about in terms of, of goals. So this is an opportunity for you to share a, a little bit about yourself. So 
that might be what what you might hear as a professional introduction or elevator pitch, which Beth will talk a little bit more about. Um, but this is a, a space for you to be comfortable in, in sharing a little bit more about yourself and what interests you in a type of role. And then taking that to the next step to ask questions about uh, a company or about a position. Um, and whether that's in person or virtual, this is an opportunity to establish that that network with that potential recruiter or representative and use that for next steps, whether that is potentially an interview or continuing to have networking conversations. All right. So to begin to, to engage in the career fair, you have to register. Uh, fortunately for in-person fairs like the STEM Plus Fair, uh, that that particular one, you don't have to necessarily pre-register, but you can swipe in uh, whenever you attend the event. Um, but ideally, we do encourage you to register ahead of time because that helps us to see how many people are coming, but also it helps you to see the employers that are going to be attending uh, that particular event. Like I mentioned with STEM Plus, there's going to be different employers on each day, um, particularly on Tuesday, uh, the STEM Plus part is like STEM adjacent employers and positions. So if that's something of interest to you, make sure that you're registering for that particular day. Uh, for our fairs in general, the registration opens two weeks ahead of time. So if you've already registered for the STEM fair um, that opened up uh, a couple days ago, for our virtual STEM fair, that will be opening up next Thursday, usually around the, the noon hour. So especially for those virtual fairs, you want to make sure that you uh, are are getting on uh, around that noon hour so that you make sure you can talk to who you want to talk to. Um, and we'll talk about what that looks like in a little bit here. Um, otherwise, I would encourage you to look at um, some of the employers will, will post events like I had mentioned and encourage you to attend. They might be hosting a, an info session or something in conjunction with a fair, sometimes during that day, sometimes maybe a week prior or maybe the week after. So if you're really interested in a particular employer, make sure that you register for those additional events. Okay, so I want to make sure that you all know how to register for our, our virtual fairs. So we'll walk through the different steps for that. Like I said, you you need to register for each of those days if it's uh, a multi-day event. Uh, for a virtual fair, it's just a single day event. So in this case, you'll just register for the event. And then within that, you'll sign up for specific sessions. So with the virtual fair, there's two different options. One is a one-on-one. -on -one, so just you and that representative. There will be a, a 10 minute slot for those one-on-ones. And then if an employer decides they wanna do a group info session, those are 30 minutes and can hold up to 50 people. So these are first come first serve. So once the slots are gone, unfortunately they're gone. Um, so that's why I encourage you to sign up as early as you can once that registration opens. Um, one other thing that I'll, I'll say too is that um, during the fair, there can still be some open slots for virtual um, virtual specific fairs. So, so that means you can sign up up to a minute before the beginning of that particular time slot. So just in case you uh, see something happen to open up, that might be an opportunity for you to, to slip in there and, and take that session. All right, so to register for the fair, if you haven't already, or any of our fairs, if you go to events, which I'll I'll show this particular piece live. So once you're logged into Handshake on the left hand side, there is an events tab. Once you click on that, it will show you things like career fairs at your school, different um, uh, employer events hosted by our career center, and things hosted by employers, so on and so forth. And so if you click on career fairs at your school, that should show you the upcoming pieces. Um, that we have for this fall. So we're going to click on the STEM career fair. 
And once we do, you can hit join event and that is your registration. It should turn green once you select the particular day that you want to join. So notice that I signed up for one of those days and now I'm officially registered. It says one of three, so I know uh, that I signed up for one specific day. Other things that I can see on this particular page, since I've registered, I can click on all employers. And once I do, I can see a little bit more about who's coming and what they are specifically hiring for. So in the view details, I can see, for, exa for example, um, internships, what school years they're targeting, and then what sample job titles. And that will be true for every uh, organization that's listed on here. You can always use the filters on the side if you're looking for something in particular, like internships versus jobs, full-time versus part-time and things like that. One other detail that I'll point out because we're on this page for our STEM uh, related uh, career fairs, I just wanna note that our schedule is a little unique that um, we will have a designated uh, two hour time slot for undergraduate students. So grad students, you of course are, are welcome to be a part of the fair, but just know that that two hour time slot is just for undergraduate students. So uh, whoever is working the event will encourage you to come back at a different time. Okay, to jump back in here, okay. Um, since our virtual career fair isn't open for registration, I'll just have a screenshot for, for you all to see what that looks like. So you did see the green button that shows once you are registered for an event. For virtual events, you'll see something called sessions. And so this left-hand side, uh, it's I'm currently highlighted over available sessions. When you click that, you should be able to see by employer what they are offering. So, so for example, this company has 30 open one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, and they have a group session from 12 to 12.30. So, so they might decide to focus a session on a particular uh, role or it might just be about their company as a whole. So make sure you're reading what the, the sessions are for before you sign up for them. And once you do click on one and sign up for it, on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see that there are um, specific uh, a specific list of your sessions. So that way you know what you signed up for. I would encourage you just in general, put it on your calendar so, so you don't forget about it, but this is a good place to come back and visit, especially if you need to change the schedule for whatever reason, you can go back to your schedule um, and, and cancel it directly in there. All right, let's talk about some some do's and don'ts here, and this will be a uh, continual trend that you'll see for the rest of our our presentation here. So, what what would make uh, your time or that employer's time grumpy like grumpy cat here? Um, so, not updating your handshake profile to attend a virtual fair you want to have your handshake profile up to date because if you sign up for a one-on-one -on -one with an employer, they will be able to view your profile. It's essentially like looking you up on, on LinkedIn, for, for example. So the more that you can do to, to show them that you are prepared and ready to go, that's going, going to help you. And so you can make it public in your settings. Um, and it's actually specifically called community settings now. Um, you can also upload your resume and use that to fill out your profile. So that should save you time as well. Um, not prepping your space for a virtual call. So I, I hope by now we've all been in the Zoom space for quite some time. So I hope that you all know how to test your video and audio ahead of time. I will say with a Handshake virtual fair, uh, it's hosted through Handshake. So they do have options to test your tech ahead of time. And we actually have a link at the end of our slide deck that will give you the information on that if you need to test it ahead of time. Um, but make sure that, that people can see you, that they can hear you, that 
they can see you via lighting, that everything is nice and clear without um, distracting backgrounds, and that you also have other materials ready to go, whether that is, for example, like a resume or, or your handshake profile. Um, dress, no dressing in pajamas because you're in your room. So to, to make the employers happy, I would encourage you to dress for confidence and Beth will talk more about what that looks like. Um, basically not, not PJs, <laughs> um, and, and finding a non-distracting space. So I, I will offer that our, the lower level of the university center, we have our employer relations office, uh, and slash interview center. And that is a space that you can actually rent out one of our rooms. If let's say you, you have, uh, uh, a noisy roommate, <laughs> uh, for example, or you need a, a clean, quiet space. So that's always an option for you. Um, taking multiple slots for every employer. So uh, in, in terms of common courtesy for your fellow classmates, I would encourage you just to take the slots for the employers you wish to talk to. Um, and, and have done the research for and have prepped ahead of time. Uh, you only need to talk to one rep. I, I promise that the other reps probably aren't going to share something totally different than the one you talk to. So again, one, one slot per employer is, is preferred there. And then lastly, not showing up for your virtual slot is, is a no-no. So we encourage you to be ready ahead of time um, and, and that will help you to get in the right mindset and not miss your call in the first place. Um, you are expected to attend all scheduled one-on-one -on -one sessions. It's kind of like, uh, think of it like an interview. You wouldn't just skip out on, on, your, on your interview because you didn't feel like it. So if you're no longer able to attend, make sure you cancel the session prior to the fair starting. Um, and, and, as far as our office, um, the CPDC, if if the employer reports that you've missed a scheduled session, um, we do have a specific uh, consequence policy for that, um, just, just so you're aware, and we can share the link out to that as well. Um, but there is an option, as, as I wrote there, uh, five minutes ahead of time. So So there should be an option for you to test your audio, your video, and all of that ahead of time. So make sure you utilize that to uh, to your advantage. Some companies will have an external link, so it might not be directly in Handshake. It might be that they attach a Zoom link. So again, just make sure that all of these things have been tested ahead of time. Okay, so all that being said is that is the virtual side. Uh, again, I encourage you to put questions in the chat that we can answer as we go here, or if you want to put it in for the Q&A later on about virtual fairs, happy to chat more about that. But otherwise, I'm going to pass it off to Beth in terms of prepping before, during, and after, specifically as it pertains to in-person fairs. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. <clears throat> So the first thing I want to talk about when it comes to preparing for a career fair is research. So we have a ton of opportunities to talk to different companies, as Katie mentioned, different companies, different days. So we really encourage you to do as much research as you can before you meet with these companies. So um, the first one we offer, uh, we recommend is researching companies whose names you don't recognize. So there are many companies on here that you will have never heard of. It doesn't mean that they're not going to be a great potential employer for you. So once you see a company that is unfamiliar to you, take some time to check out what they do, what sorts of roles they offer, what things of interest that they might be doing. So it might be worth stopping by a company that you've never heard of before. Um, check to see what roles companies are hiring for. As Katie pointed out, you'll be able to see what types of roles, whether it's full-time or internship, the titles, the different types of functions that they might be hiring for. So take a look at that and sort of determine your priorities of which companies to talk to based on that as well. And consider a range of organizations and industries. Again, you may not recognize company names. You may not even recognize the type of work that they do, but keep doing a little digging, do that research, figure out 
what they might do, you may find a niche there for yourself. You know, that company may be hiring for a data analyst you never would have thought of, or they may be hiring for a product manager um, and it might not be a tech company. So keep an open mind and uh, sort of keep a, yeah, and keep an open mind, open mind about what sort of industry or company you might be interested in talking to. And then for the companies of interest that you decide you want to talk to, make sure you learn more about the organization. So go beyond sort of the basics of what they do and what they produce, but look at their mission and their values. If you're someone who values diversity, equity, and inclusion, look at their DEI statement, see if that lines up with your priorities and your values. Um, and then check out their web presence. That's a great way to learn more about organization. So check out their company website, look at their LinkedIn, look at their, look at their Instagram or Facebook. That's going to give you an idea of, again, their sort of company culture, some of their work that they're doing that might not be highlighted on their website. It also gives you some talking points. You know, you might see a really cool project that they just started and launched that isn't mentioned on their website, but knowing that you saw it on LinkedIn shows that you're paying attention and also that you have a good talking point and that you're excited about the work that they're doing. And then research those positions that are of interest to you. So see what that entails, see what types of work you might be doing. Think about the responsibilities they may have. And then also take that and reflect uh, on yourself and think about the skills that you have and how you can relate to those, those positions, which we'll talk about in a moment about how you can then frame that and share that with employers. So once you've done your research, uh, you're going to start to think about preparing how to have conversations with these employers. So you want to start thinking about a bunch of different questions that they might ask, but here's some really common ones. So tell me a bit about yourself. Really incredibly common question when talking to a recruiter at a career fair. Also a great answer or question to be prepared for, for anything like an interview, any other networking opportunities. So it's really great to reflect on your skills and your experiences and come up with a great professional introduction. Um, we also call this an elevator pitch, 20 to 30 second overview of your experiences and your skills that are relevant to the company or the position. If that's something you want to work on, that's something that you and your career consultant can talk through. Our resource library also has some great professional introduction resources as well to help you structure that and practice it. Um, why are you interested in this company? So think about why do I want to talk to this person? Why am I interested in potentially getting an internship or job at this company, or if that's not your goal, what do you want to learn from them? What, what are you trying to achieve by having these conversations with this specific recruiter at this specific company? Um, how might you hope to grow in the roles that they're offering? So what about this role is going to fit into your longer term career development plans or your longer term goals? And then create a list of questions to ask the employer. So this is a conversation. This is not just you talking at a recruiter for five minutes. You want to make sure that you are engaging with them, that you have questions prepared, not only to show that you're interested and that you've done your research, but also so that you can learn more about these companies and roles to see if they'll be a good fit for you. Some good examples of this are what's a typical day like for this role? What fields and backgrounds have your employees come from in the past? What are the main challenges that you face as a company? So these are the sorts of questions that are going to give you great information and then also show that you're genuinely interested in the company. Generally recommend to try to ask questions that go a little bit deeper than just sort of surface level things. Again, to show that you've done your research and that you care about the work that they're doing. And then to get information that you just can't Google the answer to. You know, Reddit is a great resource for some of the basic things at, that are happening at companies, but you wanna make sure that you're getting as much information that's useful to you and helpful to you from this experience as well. So really think through what are some helpful questions um, that I can ask that's gonna get me the information that I wanna know. So some do's and don'ts of preparation. So one thing, to avoid is just thinking that your major on its own is gonna be enough to impress a recruiter. You really wanna take some time to reflect on your most relevant skills and your experiences that you think you wanna show off to a recruiter that are gonna really exemplify the skills and the value that you could bring to a role. So just because you are a particular major doesn't mean you're gonna be a great fit. So really think about your technical skills, the skills you're gaining in your classes, but also your more professional or soft skills? What are the experiences you have that show off that you're a great communicator or a collaborator or that you can work with people? So really reflect on that and prepare to talk about those things. Um, 
don't go in expecting that you're going to know what to say. Career fairs can be really stressful. You might be really nervous and you don't want to walk up to an employer and have nothing to say to them. So really, again, think about preparing that professional introduction. Think about your talking points. Think about questions you want to ask those uh, employers. And again, engage in that back and forth. Have a good conversation with them. Um, as Katie talked about before, I mentioned researching the companies and thinking about, you know, who's going to be there, who are my top priorities. Um, Katie mentioned before being thoughtful about students' time when you're registering for virtual fairs and not taking up a ton of slots. You also want to think about, okay, this might be a busy career fair. What are my priorities? Where do I want to go? How can I schedule my time so it's going to make the most sense for me and not take up other student or recruiters' time as well? And then again, preparing to ask questions in a way that um, are going to be really helpful for you um, because they, they're things you can't Google the answer to um, and that you've really thought about what about this company do I want to know? So making sure that you're preparing those questions in advance too. Great. So other things to think about as you're leading up to the fair, um, specifically around logistics. So make sure you're checking Handshake before the fair, um, because sometimes companies have to drop out. Sometimes we have late additions. Um, sometimes they uh, their time slots might change. So if you've done your research, make sure a day or two beforehand to just go through and double check that sort of the plans that you've come up with are matching when employers will be there as well. So generally, when you're thinking about attending a career fair, dress for confidence. We often get questions from students around, you know, should I be wearing a suit? Should I be wearing a t-shirt and jeans? There's a whole spectrum in there. And we generally say dress for confidence. Part of your research might be um, looking at the companies that you're interested in and sort of getting the vibe of what their culture is when it comes to dress. So if you're looking at a company where their standard day-to-day -day, uh, sort of outfits are jeans and a company t-shirt, you can mirror that if you want. You can always dress up a little bit more too. Generally, I recommend defaulting to be a little more formal than you expect, but you don't need to wear a suit, um, but make sure you're dressing in a way that's going to make you feel confident and comfortable to talk to employers. Um, as Katie said, no PJs, um, you know, really try to uh, make yourself look neat and tidy. That's a really key part. So again, you can be casual while still looking like you put forth an effort as well. Make sure you put your phone on do not disturb. You know, you don't want your phone to start ringing um, or a billion notifications to be going off while you're trying to really engage in a conversation with an employer. Make sure you bring your CNU ID to swipe in. Um, even if you do register, everyone has to swipe into the event. So make sure you have that ready. Print out your resume so that you have some paper copies um, that you can give to your desired employers so they can have a reference for you after you leave and also have a quick overview of your experiences in the moment. Um, we really encourage you to bring a notepad or if you have a tablet or you have your laptop nearby, an open document to take notes after each conversation. You hopefully will get a chance to talk to a lot of different recruiters and things might start to blur together. So it's really helpful to write things down, whether that's getting someone's um, contact information, highlights from your conversations, um, you know, things you want to remember about particular roles or information about the company that's really going to serve you well after the fact, which we'll tell you, we'll talk a bit about as well, how to do some of that follow-up and how those notes can support you. And then managing your time in the line. So as we mentioned before, thinking about what are my priorities? Who do I really want to talk to? Because you might walk into the career fair and see that your top employer has a massive line. And it, it might be your priority to stay in that line for a really long time to talk to that one employer, but you may also have four or five other uh, employers in your top choices that you might then spread your time around to. So make sure you're really thinking about how can I make the most of my time while I'm here at the career fair and how am I going to spread myself out throughout this, uh, the room. Great. So once you're at the fair, um, when you approach people, make sure you're conversational. As I mentioned before, this is a conversation, not just you rambling about your experiences. You want to make sure that you, when you approach someone, you're saying hello, nice to meet you, introducing yourself as you might if you run into a friend with a friend. Um, so making sure that you are being cordial to start off. And then, as I mentioned before, that professional introduction, that really quick overview of who you are, what you've done before, and what you're looking to do in the future. 
um, is a really great way to give a quick overview of yourself so that the employer can ask you questions, knows a bit about yourself, and has a point of reference for you. If you're in person, feel free to hand them your resume. So that's, again, a really great way for them to have a snapshot of who you are and then have a record of your conversation, too. Be prepared to answer their questions. So like we said before, really thinking through about how you might answer some common questions, how you might describe your experience or give an, a, an overview of your past skills. Wrap up the conversation based on your priorities and goals. So, you know, you don't want to take a ton of time. There's going to be long lines. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people that you want to talk to. But when you get to a point when you're like, okay, I have sort of gained the information that I wanted or achieved my goals from this conversation, that's a great place to wrap up. You want to make sure that as you're wrapping up, you get the contact information of the person that you're talking to, and then make sure that you're saying thank you. Uh, gratitude can go a really long way. So thank the recruiter for their time and the information that they've shared. And then make sure once you've stepped away to make a note about your conversation. Talk about highlights, things that you learned, things you want to make sure you remember, and again, any details about the person that you talk to so that you're able to do good follow-up. Great. So do's and don'ts of during the fair. So big no-no, do not approach a recruiter while they're on a break. It'll be very obvious when a recruiter is not ready for students to approach them. They'll be ready when they're standing behind their company's table in the rooms where the fair is happening. If you see them going to the bathroom, if you notice them eating their lunch, if you notice them stepping out to take a phone call, please let them have their time and they all need breaks too. They're gonna to be talking to a lot of students and they have their own work to do. So be sure you respect their time and their boundaries. Um, again, don't think about, don't go in assuming that you're going to remember everything. Make sure you're taking those notes between conversations so that you are able to do great follow-up and remember everything that you're uh, gaining from these great conversations. Um, coming straight from the gym, do not arrive in your gym shorts, sweaty. Uh, make sure that you're taking that time to groom yourself and dress for confidence, as we talked about before. Um, practice proper hygiene. So make sure you've had a shower recently. Make sure you've combed your hair, if that's part of your grooming routine, um, that you, again, are feeling prepared and confident to approach strangers and new people and to, to impress them. So make sure that you're taking that time to prepare yourself for that as well. Like I said before, this is not a time to just ramble out an employer for five minutes. Make sure that you're having a genuine conversation, listening to their questions and their statements, and really genuinely engaging with them. And do not cut in line or save spots for friends in line. So really try to respect other students and their time because just like you, they probably have limited time during the day. They've done the work to try to strategize how they wanna spend their time at the career fair. So make sure that you're respecting other students' time and also being patient. Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone will be encountering, encountering lines. So make sure you're being respectful of other people as well. Great, another thing to know about during the fairs is our Alitsky Family Foundation Career Readiness Program recharge rooms. So these are really great spaces that we'll have at all of the fairs where you can go in, things will be lower sensory, it'll be a quiet space that will have things like fidgets, earplugs, um, coloring pages, ways for you to take a step back and really calm down if that's something that's gonna be helpful for you. Because the career fairs are really big, they can be loud, they can be crowded, they can be a bit overwhelming. So if you need time to step back, recharge, take some time to be quiet in a really chill space, the recharge rooms are a really, really great opportunity um, to do that. We'll also have staff there. So if you have questions or if you need some words of encouragement or someone to sort of chat through your feelings of nervousness, there'll be a staff person there to help that with that as well. Great, so after the fair, so you've just gone through one, two, three days of having great conversations. So make sure that after each day that you are doing the proper follow-up and uh, sort of uh, note-taking that's gonna be really, really helpful for you in the future. So you wanna go into it knowing that you're gonna wanna take notes. Um, hopefully you're taking notes between each conversation, but at the end of your time there, 
really try to read through your notes. Make sure you've got all those details that you want to make sure you remember, because it's going to be a lot. Again, you're going to have a lot of great conversations, meet a lot of different people. So make sure that you're downloading all that information in whatever way makes sense for you so that you can do great follow up. Um, don't go in assuming that recruiters will remember everything about you. Hopefully you'll have some great conversations and make some good impressions, but the recruiters and employers are going to have talked to a lot of students. So you want to make sure that after the fact, the people that you really connected with and want to follow up with to send detailed thank you messages to them. You can do that either by connecting with them on LinkedIn. Hopefully you may have gotten their email so you can send them a direct email and make sure you're saying thank you being grat grateful for the time and information that they offered and share some details. So to really spark their memory of a conversation you had. So maybe you talked about the company's culture and you really valued that and were really excited about it. Note that. Um, maybe you talked about one of your key experiences that you thought really related to the role. Bring that up. So any details that you can share about your conversation will help jog their memory and remind them why you're a great candidate for the role. Um, don't go in assuming that you're just going to get some interviews simply based on your attendance at fairs. Sometimes that can happen. Sometimes they'll offer interviews shortly after or there'll be sessions where they'll let people know in the moment that they want them to attend. But that's not as common as people often hope. So make sure after you've talked to people, you've done the career fair, that you're then going into Handshake and that you're applying to the relevant positions that you learned about. Um, during the fair and using the information that you use to update your resume, tailor your cover letter, create a really, really great application that helps you stand out. You can also sign up for some of the career, um, or sorry, the employer events that Katie mentioned. A lot of the employers who come to campus make sure that they set up some additional events outside of the career fair. So make sure you're keeping an eye on those. If they mention that they're having on-campus interviews and they'd like you to attend, make sure you're registering for those as well. Um, and again, sending those follow-up uh, emails or LinkedIn messages to thank everyone involved. And then also, don't feel like you have to manage this all on your own. So this is a lot of information to take in. Career fairs are really busy. Make sure that you're connecting with your career consultant for support for anything from crafting follow-up messages to working on your applications, so doing the follow-up that comes with later applications, preparing for interviews, anything that comes from the career fair, don't hesitate to reach out to your career consultant for that support. Great, so to wrap up, just keep in mind that there are certain things that come with career fairs um, and that you wanna sort of have your mentality right around it. So career fairs are not the only way to find a job. Um, we have some great employers coming to these career fairs, but there are a lot of employers who either can't make it, don't know to come, um, have a lot on their plate, so they are not arriving at our career fairs. So make sure you're keeping an eye out on things like Handshake, where companies are posting jobs and internships, looking at career, um, I'm sorry, employer websites and their careers pages. Um, networking with people is a really great way to find jobs. And that's something if you want support on, feel free to connect with your career consultant. Um, use a variety of resources in your search in combination with those in-person events. So just as I mentioned, doing things like networking, online searching, um, connecting with faculty and staff members who may know of places where you can look for internships, talking to your career consultant about strategies of other ways to find opportunities. And then always check that handshake uh, listing first and use it as that research tool for positions and companies. Don't go into this event blind, making sure that you're doing that research so that you're fully prepared to make the most of the career fair that you're attending. Great, so a few resources that we have available for you. Um, all of you should be on career launch, no matter what, um, I take that back, all undergrads should be on career launch for um, your school year. So it should be on your Canvas homepage. It's a really great resource for anything from resumes to cover letters to career fairs. So there's a really great module that you can check out there that reviews a lot of the things that we've talked about here. It might go in a little bit more depth as well. And then the link in this slide for signing up for managing virtual fair sessions is a handshake help page that will help you if you run into any um, issues or confusions around virtual uh, career fairs. So that's a really great resource for those as well. Excellent. So 
we just shared a lot of information with you all. Um, if you have questions for us, feel free to pop them in the chat. You can unmute yourself to ask. Um, so feel free to, to share out your questions now. I had some questions sent to me um, that I want to make sure get get addressed. Um, one one was about timing, and so I would encourage you one <laughs> to to go when you don't have class. So again, strategically plan. Um, but I also wanted to let you know that the doors close thirty minutes prior to the end of the fair and before lunch um as as well so between like each of our different types of sessions so that means um someone uh will be standing at the door and unfortunately they will not let you in with less than a half hour left so make sure that you're planning accordingly with that um you might also have to wait in line for our coat room um so so on both floors for our STEM fairs, we're going to have coat rooms where you can drop off, obviously, your coat, but also backpack. Um, and please do not take any food or other items into there. Uh, ideally, you should just be bringing, as Beth mentioned, like your your resume, maybe pad polio, something to take notes um, with with you into the fair. So just wanted to to address that particular question. Great. I see there's a question here too about bringing cover letters. Um, you do not need to bring your cover letter. Um, that's something that you will want to craft specifically for your application. Um, I think just having your resume on hand is, is enough for a career fair. Okay. Um, someone asked, would you recommend applying to companies before or after career fairs? Um, so I would say <laughs> usually it, it depends, but um, if if you need certain information to help you in your application, then I would say after. Um, but if you already feel like you have the information you need and you want to share with them that you have applied and want to talk more about like the next level in, in your um, conversations, then I would say before. So, so really it just depends on, on your needs, but also, um, you know, how, how it fits into your overall timing in, in your search. Cause we know it's a busy time of year here. Great. I also see a question about, um, first year students, including relevant coursework on your resume. Um, generally, yes, it's a great thing to, to add because it's a great piece of your experience, um, as a first year student. Um, however, if you have more questions about your resume, I'd recommend checking in with your career consultant. They can talk with you about your priorities, how to best show off your, your most relevant skills too. Um, and also too, generally for career fair preparation, if that's something you want to talk through more explicitly with your career consultant, you can also set up an appointment with them too. All right. I also got, um, is it okay to ask for employee referral codes when applying for jobs? Um, in general, I would say no. <laughs> um, but this is something where, like, let's say you have a conversation, like in um, a networking chat with somebody outside of the fair, maybe it becomes something in a follow up conversation. But in general, I would say um, right off the bat, you're, you're not going to say like, hi, can you refer me to a job? You know, you need to build that relationship a, a little deeper. Um, and focus more on getting getting insight and getting information to help you um, stand out in that process. Um, I also got a question about, uh, uh, okay, there, how many companies are looking for freshmen? So, so, um, Again, it is going to be based on the the filters on Handshake. So if if you filter by freshman, that should give you the number of whatever is um, currently looking for those first years. Um, I imagine most of the companies coming 
uh, are not necessarily focusing on first years. Um, some of them do have more like development programs. So, so that might be more for a first year student. Um, some folks, some companies might be looking for, for people, for positions even beyond next summer. So, so that's just something else to, to think about in terms of timing with some of these roles. Um, there's also a question um, just to reiterate around registration. In-person fairs do not require registration. However, we generally recommend that you do. That gives us an idea of who's coming. Um, also then allows you to have that on your calendar within Handshake too. But if you by chance do not register, you can still come. And as a follow-up, someone asked if the add session button will appear after registration opens. Yes, specifically for the virtual fairs in Handshake, like the virtual STEM fair. Um, and yes, we will be sending out the recording uh, of this uh, via email. So just make sure you take a look at that. Getting a lot of direct messages here. Okay. Um, <laughs> If this is your first time finding a job and you have no experience, how do you recommend uh, making yourself look better? So uh, one, you got into Carnegie Mellon. Congratulations. That is a huge step and hopefully a confidence booster in beginning a conversation with an employer. That also means that you are taking some inevitably difficult courses and probably doing some engaging projects in those courses. So I think a good place, if if you haven't had a job, if you haven't had an internship on campus position, anything like that, you still have your academic experiences that you can pull from and, and certainly talk about those, um, especially for those of you who put like relevant coursework on, on your resume. Um, a, a recruiter might look at your resume and say, oh, tell me more about this particular class and what you're doing. And that could be a great conversation starter. So I, I think that's a good way to, again, begin to show like you do have experience, even if it's not uh, like a, a full-time, part-time job. Same thing with volunteering student organizations and things like that. Um, I know I had one other question up in here. Hang on a second. Oh, uh, another one I just wanted to address Someone had asked how long uh, the wait times could be. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you all. Last year, we had over 2,000 students come to, uh, it was a one-day fair, I will say that, but we did have 2,000 students come to a fair. And inevitably, within that time, you're, you're going to be waiting. And depending on how popular the employer is, uh, it, it could be 45 plus minutes. Um, some might be a few minutes. So honestly, it's just going to depend on how popular the employer is, uh, how many representatives do they bring with them. Uh, but also some uh, some employers do some group chats with people too. And if that happens to be the case, don't be afraid to ask your questions um, because sometimes people feel like, oh, if I'm in a group, I'm afraid to like step forward and say something. Uh, especially when you're like, oh, I prepared my introduction, all of this, but don't be afraid to to ask questions in that situation. Okay. Yeah. I see there's a question here about reaching out to employers afterwards and mentioning you apply to their position and imply you want them to boost you without being too forward. Yeah, so I think simply reaching out and expressing gratitude and your excitement about a particular role is a great way to do that. Um, I think that, you know, recruiters will have talked to a lot of people who probably won't reach out to them afterwards. Um, but if you do, that shows that you're excited and interested. So again, showing gratitude and humility while also, you know, again, reminding them of your skills is a great way to let a uh, recruiter know that you're interested and hopefully if they think you're a great fit that they can then boost you to the next step there too. All right. Um, 
There's a question about international students. Should I consult OIE first before attending? Um, you can certainly chat with OIE, especially as you're thinking about CPT or OPT and whatever your particular visa status is, like they are the go-to people. I will say that um, hopefully at our, our career fairs like we've had in the past, um, we should be able to list like who is sponsoring for a particular role. So that might help you as you decide who you would like to talk to at, at the fair. Um, but as far as like the actual next steps in uh, doing the internship, that's where OIE will be your best friend. Um, there's a question about putting, uh, talking about high school experiences as a first year. Absolutely. That is a key part of your experience and part of how you got into CMU. So feel free to talk about that. Um, we generally recommend with resumes and I'd say like general sort of discussion of your skills. Once you're halfway through your sophomore year, that's really when you should really be focusing on just your college experiences because you'll have been here for a year and a half. You should have enough experience to really focus on that. But as a first year, especially this fall, most of your experience comes from high school. So feel free to talk about those relevant experiences that you had um, before you came to CMU. Yes, that's a good ad from my earlier question. So I appreciate that, Beth. Um, Someone asked if your field is portfolio based, should you bring a laptop or images to showcase some of your work or would a resume still be enough? Uh, great question. I will mention that historically we've done a fair in the spring that is geared more towards, let's say design, architecture um, related things. And uh, that's part of the norm is having your, your portfolio. Um, I would recommend having a resume that has a QR code to your website or your portfolio. Um, some folks also bring uh, printed out slides of some of, of their work. So let's say this is like UI UX. If, um, that way you can see a little bit more of that from a visual standpoint. Um, but I in general would say avoid bringing a laptop because then it's just kind of clunky carrying that around with you and like where do you put it down how do you show it off um some people have done ipads uh, so that might be an option as well but in general i would say like the paper version is totally okay okay <laughs> these are great questions thank you all all right any any further questions? And Katie and I can stick around for a few extra minutes too. So as folks are trickling out, feel free to stick around and, and ask questions then. But thank you all so much for, for coming. We are really excited about the career fairs. Again, reach out to your career consultants. Um, if you have further questions, wanna dive in deeper with your professional introductions, preparing your resumes, and we'll look forward to seeing you all at the fairs in a few weeks. Yep. And uh, as I said before, we will be emailing out the recording and the slides um, within the next 24 hours. So uh, sit tight for those. But, but again, feel free to reach out if you have additional questions. And we look forward to seeing you at our fairs.